Hey there, welcome to today's episode. It's going to be a live and unedited session where we take a look at the updated stem splitting for Logic Pro on the iPad. It's also been updated for the desktop version along with a bunch of other new features, but we're only focusing on stem splitting in this video. I'm also not affiliated with Logic or Apple in any kind of way. This is my honest opinion. It was already very good, the stem splitting, but apparently this new update has made it even better. It looks for more elements now. So at one point it used to look for your drums, your vocals, your bass and other. It would group everything else. It will now look for guitars and also pianos on top of that. And I've created an audio loop, which we'll talk about in a second so that we can test this thing out. Now, Logic Pro on the iPad, I keep it here as a companion to Koala Sampler. The last time I made content like this, I managed to upset the Koala Sampler community a little bit. I'm not sure why, because everything I said was a fact and it still remains true. Koala Sampler stem splitting is okay. It will get you by in a pinch. That's not a big thing to be upset about. It's just a fact. If you put them side by side against the Logic version, the Logic Pro version wins. Now, I understand that Koala Sampler is made by one guy. It's a small development team against Apple. That wasn't the point. The point of the video was that you can use a third party application alongside Koala Sampler in order to just get better results. And people do it all the time. They use Koala Sampler with ORM so that it can split things out and use different VSTs, different plugins. But people weren't mad at them about saying it. But apparently when I said it about Logic Pro and the stem splitting, that upset quite a few people, including the creator of Koala Sampler. So don't be mad at me about this video. What I'm saying is the truth. And it's just a workflow. It's something to use with Koala Sampler. I'm not saying forget Koala Sampler. I make all my beats there. I could just scrap Koala Sampler and make the beats in Logic Pro, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I use it alongside Koala Sampler. So don't be mad at me. We're going to test this out, of course. We've got a Logic Pro session. It's blank. It's got one audio track and we need to bring in some audio to obviously split the stems on it. What I've done is I've gone ahead and made an audio loop for myself so that I don't get stuck for copyright. If I use any kind of well-known piece of audio, I'm going to get in trouble. I don't have a splice account to just pick a loop there. So I made one and I made sure that it had all the elements that we need. So it's got some drums, bass, piano, guitar, all of that kind of stuff inside of the loop. And we can just see how good it is. This is the first time I'm testing it as well. This is all kind of in real time. We need to set the project. So I'm going to set that to 87 because that's what I know I created my loop in, in terms of the BPM. And if I go to my downloads folder, so sample folders and downloads, I should be able to find it here because I just airdropped it from Ableton. So we've got test loop. That's the one we're looking for. I'm going to drag that and put it onto an audio track. I'm going to loop it up. As you can see, it is 87 BPM and four bars. And it's just like a little poppy thing or not pop, but you'll get the idea. Take a listen. Just something very basic and very quick so that I could do this demonstration. Now, I treated it like a track, so I put a little compression on there. I put some effects on some of the individual tracks just so that I'm aware of what that sounds like when it separates it out. I'll kind of have a good idea in my mind, you know, where it's pulled out the reverb and things like that. In order to split it, it's very simple. You just go to the waveform, you double click. And then what we can do is we can go to stem splitter and you'll see you've now got these extra options that weren't there previously. We've got the piano and the guitar that we can choose from. Obviously, you can just unselect things. If you don't want those elements, you can just yeah hit the little checkbox, just pull out the thing you're looking for. But of course, we want to split everything. You can now create these sub mixes. There's a lot more that you can do, but we're just going to go with basic stem splitting. The performance will depend on your iPad. This is an M2 chip, 12.9 iPad Pro. So not the newest M4 chip, but the previous model. It is speedy. I don't know how quick it's going to do this. This is a first test. So let's just see. OK, pretty darn speedy, almost instantaneous. I wasn't expecting that, actually. I thought there'd be a little working time. It's a short loop at four bars, but it seems to me that even if you had something relatively long with the performance of these iPads now, it'd probably be pretty quick. We can now take a listen and see what it sounds like. And we just do that by soloing each individual element. And we'll start with the vocals. Yeah, it's pretty good, pretty darn clean. I do think the performance of it was always good, but that does feel cleaner still. It does sound like there's less artifacts in there. 
I dare say you're never going to get perfect results with stem splitting, not until the technology advances even more, which I'm sure it will at some point. If you use like an NPC, you've got stem splitting. It's better when you use it in controller mode. If you use it in standalone, it's a bit poor. Koala samplers is okay, like I've mentioned, not upsetting anyone again. But yeah, you depending on what you feed it will also have an impact. If you feed it something very clean and something new, you'll get better stems. If you feed it a really old gritty vinyl sample, it's got a bunch of static and noise in there. It's going to struggle. Of course it's going to struggle. I'll do more tests at some other point, but this is a relatively clean sample made inside of Ableton with contact instruments, a little bit of compression, little saturation and things here and there, but it's pretty good results so far. Let's take a listen, uh, a listen even to the drums. And again, perfectly usable, pretty darn clean. All of these samples, let's face it, you can take those and then you could EQ it maybe a little bit. You could apply some more effects, a little distortion here and there. It would certainly be a usable sample. It opens up the world of sampling to just infinite possibilities. It was already pretty big when you think about all the music in the world that you could sample from. But the fact that we can now cherry pick through these individual elements and get pretty good usable results is pretty crazy. And the fact that it's all on an iPad still kind of blows my mind because at one point you would have needed a big powerful computer to handle this. All of this is now mobile so when I'm using Koala Sampler and I want the good stem splitting I can do all of that here. Just very quickly before we listen to the other elements one thing that I know will be a turnoff for people is that with Logic Pro it's an application that requires a subscription. I know that is a big turnoff. I don't like it personally subscription services but with this one it's cheap so it's only five pounds a month and the other thing that I like about it is that it's an opt-in, opt-out service. You're not tied to a 12-month contract or anything. So if you just want to split a bunch of stems in a month, just pay for it for a month and then shelve it until some other time. I consider that like getting a haircut. That's just a, something that you pay for, a service that you pay for at some point. Treat it that way. I don't think the subscription model is too much of a pain, but I know some people are still going to be turned off about it. There'll be comments, I'm sure, don't want to pay for a subscription. I get it, but at the same time, it's pretty cheap. Let's take a look at what we got next, the bass line. Again, perfectly good, clean, usable results. We'll move on to the guitar. <laughs> Yeah, you couldn't say it was 100% perfect, but pretty darn close, certainly with a couple of little effects thrown in there. If that was a little sample I wanted to just layer over something else I was working on, I could definitely get away with that. Let's now take a listen to the piano. Yeah, same result, pretty good. I did put a couple of other bits in, I think maybe just one more element, but there was like a string or a pad or something low level because I wanted to see if it would find that in the other category, which it looks like it has. I can't remember what instrument it was. I used a bunch of just contact instruments inside of Ableton to do this. We'll take a quick listen. Yeah, perfectly usable again. So I have to say, I am impressed with the update, but I was impressed prior to the update. I think the stem splitting's always been good with Logic Pro. The reason why I do keep it around that, as I said, in the AI mastering tools I use a lot with Koala Sampler. Hopefully this video has gone down well to give you an insight into this, and I haven't wicked off the Koala Sampler community any more than I have already. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I think it sounds pretty darn good. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.